Hello, hello, everybody. How are you? It's Saturday. It's serendipity time. Serendipity, you know, that kind of like cool, groovy surprise. <clears throat> I actually have a little bit of time between clients. Yes, I'm here on Saturdays. I work Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Those are my major days. And then sometimes I throw in a Tuesday. So that I can, um, you know, if I get in folks that uh, maybe aren't. Uh, oh, my grandson's texting me. I was like, I text my grandson and he like never texts me back. And I'm like, dude. So I text him and I said, is this, um, and his name is Adarius. Okay. Um, I, was, I was like, so is this a Darius's phone or what? You know, and he goes, yo, grandma, I'm sorry. I've been real busy. So I'm kind of like, okay, I get it. You know, he's working. Um, I'm proud of him on that. Um, I think he's kind of emancipating. Um, so I always like to send that boy a lot of covering. He doesn't real. I mean, he probably does, you know, because he's like me. Um, but anyway, so it's Saturday, it's a serendipity time, so hey, so let me know, hey, hello Serena, how are you beautiful? Um, le I'm gonna say, okay, so do you guys want to focus on something special, like the romance, you know, how's date night gonna be, um, or you just wanna, ooh, that, oh, there they are. I have Gabby's Cool Deck, The Mystic Afternoons. That's handy. So, you know, is there anything special anybody wants to look at today? Anything? Come on, people. Give me, throw me a bone. Oh, I know. I'm so glad Brandon is home. And he's uh, he's been doing his, he's been hanging his IV infusion. Yeah, it was really pretty cool. I, you know, he was like, oh, I can do it. And I'm like, so cool, because I'll be at work. Um, but, uh, and the home health people, uh, prosperity. Okay. Let me see. Oh, I've got the angels of, okay. Potential romance and then prosperity. Stephanie said, um, prosperity. So we're going to roll and let's get a couple of cards off of the angels of abundance. Um, deck. Oh, I am too. I am too. I'm like, good golly. And so Danielle wants romance, Renee wants abundance. Okay, well, we're going to do both. How about that? I got a little bit of, ah, yeah, I got some time. I uh, said so they usually come in right on time. So it looks like I've got, ah, okay, there's a couple right here. That one show, okay. Okay, blah, 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 blah. okay. Let's see if we get another card that comes through. So, um, don't, oh, I love how everybody's commenting. Thank you so much. Don't forget to give me a little heart or a like or something like that, um, on the video so that like it gets moved up in the algorithm. When you guys show some love and make a comment it actually boost it up in the algorithm and I'm seeing if it'll give one more card. Did you know like Facebook, when you like boost, boost your post, um, and you let Facebook handle everything that they put trolls, they direct it to people or bots or whatever that are trolls, because even if it's negative stuff that they say, it boosts up the algorithm. They told me they were like, girl, leave the negative comments. And I'm like, I don't like negative comments. They make me sad. I mean, I don't really take them personally, but I'm like, God, that's a lot of negative energy to be calling somebody, you know, whatever on a message, you know, not on a message, on a comment. And they were like, no, it boosts up your algorithm. And I'm like, so hate sells? I don't like that. It makes me sad. Love should sell. I mean, we don't want to sell love. Yeah, you all know what I'm talking about. Okay, all right. See if it gives me. Come on, give me one more card. One more card. Come on. We need... Because I only got two. I need one more card. Okay, this one's sticking up, so we're going to pull that one. And that will be our number three card. So, um, mm, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, interesting. 
Uh, okay, are y'all ready for some abundance um, guidance? Abundance guidance. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right, so the first card that came up is this focus on your priorities. And, um, and I was like, so I think the way it's coming across to me is that you really need to decide what's important to you. Uh, or or what what is your specific goal? What is your specific goal when it comes to money? So we're going to smudge this just a little bit. Okay. So what's your specific goal when it comes to your abundance? So somebody might say, well, my my specific goal is to ensure that my 401 is nice and thick and plentiful for my retirement and then we might have um, somebody on the other thing my goal is to have all the material things and I'm not knocking it you know because sometimes people like to have a lot of things around them uh, you know like a nice car a boat a house clothes cool furnishings from obscure places whatever and if that's if that floats your boat that's groovy but it's the message I'm getting is that we've been taking, especially when it comes to our finances, that we've been taking it and spreading it out and nothing is getting nurtured and nothing is getting nourished. So the energy on this is saying we you need to get rid of the minutia. You need to get rid of the little Frivolous, trivial, and that's the way it comes across. Get rid of the friv frivolous, trivious, trivials and focus on what you really want. So for people that are like, I want to buy a house, then this is focus on buying that house. And that means that you're going to also have to start creating what that house looks like or the vibration of that house that you're expecting. Focus on what you are wanting to achieve financially. Now, that's, you know, so this is like, we're all over the place. You're not even, you're thinking, oh yeah, I want to buy a house, but you're not being specific. Uh, I want to do, uh, you know, I want all my credit cards paid off, but you still keep charging. Um, on your credit cards. This is about putting focus to that specific end result and being very precise on what you're looking for. All right. Now, um, this card makes me laugh because I have been preaching this mantra forever. Okay. Everybody has to have a side hustle. Okay, what is your side hustle? And some of you are looking at me and you're going, girl, let me just tell you, I only want to work my nine to five and go the AF home, okay? I don't want to deal with a side hustle. I don't. All I want to do is go do my job and go home. And I'm like, okay, I get it. But guess what? You're going to be stuck doing that nine to five Every day for the rest of your adulting life, unless you bring in a side hustle of sorts that is going to bring you joy, be an expression of who you are, and get you, and that's what helps you get to that place of abundance and manifestation. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, it, it's, it's, this is what I'm seeing, Okay. Um, I, one time I was working with this guy and he told me that he had done some DMT and I'm like, cool, you know, share your experience with me. Cause you know, DMT is about a five to a 15 minute trip. So I'm kind of like not worth my time. Uh, and I don't like getting sick, uh, you know, so anything that makes me sick, I probably won't do. Um, DMT did not make me sick, but, um, you know, it's only like a five to 15 minute trip. And so he's telling me about his trip. And he says that he, you know, that he gets, you know, the door opens up and he is looking and it looks like a factory kind of thing. 
And in this factory or manufacturing or creation zone, whatever, everybody's doing a task. And they're very, and he's like, and they're just like doing the task. You know, and I'm like, robotic is what I'm picking up. And, you know, and I go, well, how did the people look? And he's like, well, I guess they're happy. You know, it's like nobody looked mad, but and I go, were people smiling? And he goes, no, not really. They were just doing their job and it just looked so peaceful. And everybody was working at the same time. So it looked kind of harmonious. And I'm like thinking in my head, you know what? Looks are deceiving. So if you're going to work, every day and you're doing the nine to five and you're kind of doing the same thing every day and you don't have a smile on your face, you're going to be stuck in that hell for your, for your adulting life. Okay. You're going to be stuck in that robotic position. So what's your freaking side hustle what's your moonlighting and you know and, and i'm kind of giggling over here and i'm like if you like to bartend moonlight as a bartender maybe you can even you know get your little able commission okay uh you know the little paper that you need that you can serve or sell alcohol and maybe um think about doing private events and bartending at private events that's a form of moonlighting you're not hitting somebody's time card machine but it allows you to express yourself creatively and be very unique in what you do. That's why I do what I do. I was a nurse for a long time. I worked in healthcare and I did this kind of stuff with my patients. You know, they were all on ventilators, you know, and people, people, people lived. Okay. Um, but I, and then I went and I taught in some, you know, some adult colleges and then I get to this place. Okay, Deanna Smith, that's not cool. We don't go on your website during your during whatever you're doing and um, peddle our, our wares. Deanna, I ban you in the name of Jesus. Okay, you're not allowed to be here. Block block done okay that's uncool to do that is very uncool to do i don't do that to other people and i will not allow that to happen on my site and i don't allow these people to be bugging you either i'm sorry peace and love to you guys you know um i, I just i don't like it when people go on people's websites like that okay so anyway so going back to this moonlighting it's your side hustle it's your gig it's what you're doing to get to a place that you really want to be with the least amount and i'm going to use the word resistance and um resentment because when we're very robotic in what we do we're going to start developing some resentment and that resentment will turn into what i call dis-ease Okay, so I like this last card, and I know some of you are like, oh, she's talking about God, and I'm like, okay, God is creator, is whatever, whatever, whatever you want to call God is groovy. God, to me, is Elohim, it's the many faces, I see them in a thousand, I see them in a thousand different ways and places. Connect in with your source. What is your creator? What is your light? What is your place of safe, of safety, of spiritual safety? It's saying connect in with that. You know, often we don't think about the fact that we can um, ask for that guidance. Show me the light. You know, that's my favorite thing to say is, Show me the light. Show me the way. Show me what I need to know so that I can be the best person possible for me and for the people around me and for people like you. You may only know me on the internet, but I want to be the best, most authentic that I can be. And so I talk to the big, you know, the kahuna up there above, and I'm always asking for light and guidance. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that. So this is about getting your side hustle going. 
you know, where do you really want to be when you're, um, you know, at your, okay, there's two of the romance cards. Where do you want to be um, in your, you know, your abundance? You have to create that abundance and create abundance with doing what you love to do. So if you don't love what you're doing right now, guys, start looking for your side hustle and figure, you know, and start figuring how I can start melding into this and maybe that side hustle that I only have to put 20 hours a week into will be my full-time job at a, you know, in a year, six months. My friend is um, taking, you know, she's looking at a little bit of a, of a career change and so she signed up for a class and it ended up being a huge class and she's a little worried about that. So let's just, you know, say, hey, let's love, send love to Maris's friend that she can get through this class that she's taking and it will be painless and a breeze and she will receive high scores and learn a whole bunch along the way. Yeah, she's a groovy chick. I like her. All right, so I'm seeing if there's, okay, another card. Nothing's really coming up. I see three that have already come out. So let's roll with that three. We're still good on time. Ooh, okay. Um, okay. Uh, love, 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 love. So now we're doing a little bit of a romance. And I was like, damn, I was hoping it was about date night. Because, you know, our date night's going to be at home tonight. So I was like, hey, what do we get to do on date night? Um, and I'm like, hmm, looks like we're going to be eating hamburgers. Hold on. <laughs> no, I'm not hating on the hamburger. No, I really, I don't, I, 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 he's not allowed to go anywhere. Not because of me, his nurse. Um, his home health nurse said, uh, yeah, you need to kind of hang out at the house. You don't need to be out running around. May I am a groovy chick. You are so cool. You are so cool. Okay, whoops, here we go. So here's a little smudgy smudge. Okay, come on, get, get smoking for me. Um, let's do um, a little smudge before the love reading. You know, you can never smudge too much. I don't give a shit what people say. That's too much smoke. And I'm like, oh, y'all need that. I was like, oh, by the way, the lady that complained about my um, smudging every day, she moved out of the building. Guess who's going to smudge every day? Wow. I love it. Uh, so here we go, beautifuls. Yeah. So that I speak truths. And that when I touch those cards, that they give truth and insight. So, all right. Are y'all ready to see this love card? Are you ready? Because I'm ready. Okay, so here's the love card. And we're starting out with, and um, let me just tell you, uh, this mama, big mama, I love to be in control. <laughs> so when I saw this, I was like, shish, is this towards me? And it's about letting control, let go of control issues. And I was like, you mean I can't micromanage my husband? I can micromanage him until he's discharged <laughs> and his pick lines out. <laughs> but um, on this let go of control issues, um, we want things to be in a more natural rhythm through there. However, I'm going to say this. Letting go, go of control issues does not mean you let go of your boundaries. So when you have personal boundaries about your sacred space, your sacred space, your sacred space, you need to maintain those. You can adjust them. You can, and I'm going to use the word manipulate, but it's the good kind of manipulate, like my shoulder's out of place and you got to manipulate it back in, like a dislocation. So we're going to talk about the happy manipulation, but you can manipulate that energy in order to start healing on that process that you were letting, that you were had to have so much strict control over yourself romantically or emotionally that emotional 
you know, so I'm not talking about, you know, like your workplace. I'm talking about your personal, personal, intimate relationships. Some things you're going to have to let go of that control in order for things to progress or move naturally. When we're holding way too much control in that relationship or our side of the relationship, what happens is, is that relationship will go into a burnout. And it's, and if we don't nurture it and love on it, that relationship will fall apart. It'll fall apart. And it sometimes cannot be salvageable. So when we make an intention to start, okay, l l let me see how I can change maybe some of my boundaries in order to be conducive to us being in a loving relationship. That's what this is focusing on. And not saying, and let me repeat that, it is not saying it is appropriate or okay for you to completely drop all of your boundaries, okay? That's not what this is saying. This is saying manipulate them, work them, and kind of shift them around a little bit so that you can allow your situation to work in a more natural manner, all right? Now, You notice that this is in an upside down position and normally people would go, when I read Doreen Virtue's cards, there's no upside down. It's always one way or another. And what I'm getting through here when I'm looking at this, because this is talking about the pay attention to the red signs. This is, yeah, you have been paying attention to the red flags. You have been. But you haven't been reacting to them. You're almost acting as if you don't see them and you're not no you, you don't see them. They're not meaning anything to you. Okay? So when you're looking at this and it says pay attention to the red flags, this is also saying you need to have a response or a reaction to those red flags. So if you're seeing a red flag, you have to act on that. You either address it and go, hey, what's this? Or, you know, ex show me this or clarify this for me. Um, you know, can you tell me why you have a box of condoms and some thong underwear in your car, babe? You know, it didn't happen to me on this marriage, but, you know, it's that kind of thing. If you're seeing red flags, it is time for you to start to acknowledge that they exist. When I was married to my first husband, my kid's dad, um, he, and I'll just tell you, everybody knows when they hear, when they meet me, I'm like, oh, he's a philanderer. He had so many affairs, it wasn't funny. Um, in fact, I ended up in that, when I was in that marriage, I took that so energetically hard that I ended up at age 25 with a radical hysterectomy. And so I'm, I'm, when you see these red flags, you need to react to it. And if that means that you found a box of condoms in his car or, um, what would chicks, what would chicks do? Well, I don't know. I've never cheated like that. So I don't know how, oh, I'm like, how would I like, mm. or, you know, there's some guy that keeps texting your woman, you know, whatever it is, whatever the situation is, start paying attention to that, but it's time for you to respond. It's time for you to ask questions and, you know, and if this has been the hundredth time that your lover, your, your, your person has been your spouse, partner, whatever you want to call them, has been unfaithful to you. It is time for you to start acknowledging that and move on. Get out of that situation. And I'm going to make this one point here. I have yet to meet somebody that um, was a serial cheater that changed. Um, Cynthia Simpson, she was like a mom to me. We shared the same birthday, but of course not the same year. She's about 15 years older than me. And she once told me when I was going through these things in my life, she said, baby, 
I'm just going to tell you, leopards do not change their spots. They will tell you that they are a cougar, but they're not. They're still a leopard. And so I'm like, okay, I get it. I get it. Okay, leopards don't change their spots, okay? They don't. And so somebody who serially has been um, a cheater will always be a cheater. They don't change. And you can put them in tons and tons and tons of therapy, but they're going to either have to work on that shish every day or they're going to go back to that same habit. So this is saying when you're looking in your relationship and you've had a lot of crappy shish, now I'm not talking about we haven't been able to connect because of, you know, work um, or school or whatever. This is, uh, we ain't been connecting because they've been connecting with somebody else kind of thing, okay? Or they've been not nurturing or nourishing that relationship. This is for the people that are um, abusing your energy, that are taking advantage of your energy for a nefarious reason. This is for your narcissist and your sociopath lovers. It is time for you to get the hell out of there. Respond to those red flags. Quit ignoring them. And then, okay, and then this is supposed to be up like this. So, and then our last one has been uh, the last one, and I'm like laughing over here. It's keep an open mind. Okay, your soul, and I will just read this, your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations. All right, so I have this idea in my head that I need to become a matchmaker, and everyone's like, what? And I go, a matchmaker? Well, A, I'm pretty ding dang good at assessing people's energy. And, you know, whatever I don't blatantly see, I'm going to call and look at these babies and say, hey, show me what I need to know, right? Love Carl Jung for that one. And sometimes we have in our mind, and, and I'm just, I'm going to pick on some of my girlfriends, um, and they'll say, I love a man in uniform. And I'm like, so what do you mean by a man in uniform? Well, you know, like military, or law enforcement. There's something about the uniforms. They just, they're yummy. And I'm like, so you wouldn't be down for the guy that wears the uh, uniform of the Amazon truck or the Orkin, you know, the bug killer people or whatever. And they're looking at me like... That's not a uniform, and I'm like, it may not be a uniform in your eyes, but it's a uniform in somebody else's eyes. So keep an open mind. If you love a man in uniform, it doesn't always mean he's military or law enforcement. <laughs> he can be the guy Amazon truck driver, okay? Um, I have a... I have a really cool Amazon truck driver, and I'm going to miss him when I move. And I'm kind of like, dude, can you, like, drive down to Anadarko and deliver my shish? And it's not that I have a crush on him, because I don't have a crush on him. But he loves my dogs. And so he's so cool in my eyes, because he acknowledges my little Benny or my little Katox when they go outside with me to go and greet the Amazon guy, because I always love what I get on Amazon. So, hey. You know, so um, just because you like a man in uniform doesn't always mean it's he's popo or he's military. It can be the Amazon guy. It can be the Orkin guy. It can be any. It can be a guy in scrubs. You fall in love with the ER doctor. I don't know. You know, come on, get re, get with it. And the same thing. You know, if a man says he loves a woman with big breasts, okay, great. You know, um, he may meet a girl that's a B cup, and she's going to be the most phenomenal vibration that ever stepped into his frequency. You know. Keep an open mind. Even though we think we know what we need or we think we know what we feel, it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes the universe surprises us with something that is just perfect. That's serendipity. That is a total serendipity moment. So 
this. So that was our love reading. I know I was really kind of hoping that romance was going to be awesome and that date night was going to be great. But it looks like we're going to be doing burgers, man, and that's okay. I'm just grateful that my man is home. And um, I hope everybody's doing beautiful today. It's really kind of pretty. I hope it doesn't get up into the 90s. It would be really cool if it was about 85. I could handle that. And um, that would be a beautiful day. Don't forget. Do not forget. Tomorrow is our fundraiser for Brandon. And I am offering the Ionic Foot Detoxes for 25 bucks on cash or 30 bucks on a card, whichever way you want to do it, I don't care. But if I got it on a card, um, I have fees I have to pay on that. So I'm going to hit you up for the extra five to cover those fees. I won't lie. So bring cash. It'll be groovy. See you then. And you know, I'll probably do a video tomorrow too since I'll be up here. Peace, love, and harmony. Don't forget, give me a heart. Make a cool comment, except for you, Deanna Smith. Shame on you. And um, uh, share the love with other people. And, you know, um, if you got some extra stars in the star bank, give me some stars. I think that's so cool. And Facebook kind of does this little on my back when y'all give me stars. So, peace. See you later.